So Satya, I'm of course going to read from my, well, one of my favorite things to read in the morning, which is the Hindustan Times, page one plus, which is called Life, the Universe and Everything. And it literally has all my favorite topics uh, covered this morning. There's outer space. Mm -hmm. So there's a really interesting story here about a super Earth, which has been found orbiting a nearby star. And scientists have discovered a super-Earth planet with a mass around 5.4 times that of Earth's orbiting a bright star near our sun. What do you think, Satya? Are we going to have little green men descending on us anytime soon? I'm thinking first we have a super-moon and now we have a super-Earth. <laughs> we are super What beings. are the chances? We are super. This whole year is going to be super. I totally Okay, and then of course there's my next favorite topic, which is Egyptian mummies. I, yes. I love I, I, I love reading about ancient Egypt. It's such a fascinating civilization. And a 3,000-year-old mummy has been found in an Egyptian tomb. 3,000-year-old mummy. 3,000 years ago, they had developed the technology to preserve bodies. They had, they had developed this ex absolutely fabulous system of rituals. They had this crazy imagination. I mean, ancient Egypt is so fascinating. And archaeologists have unearthed a 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummy in very good condition. Nice. Very good condition after 3,000 years. That's really something. And it's resting inside a brightly colored wooden sarcophagus. How nice is that? It's been found near Luxor. And then, of course, the third, and this one is, is really my favorite, Shakespeare. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a literature student, and, and I, I, I mean, William Shakespeare, of course, you know, ruled my years of, of college studies. And uh, it turns out that an, anon anon an anonymous 16th century play may have been written by playwright William Shakespeare, according to scholars who have used mathematics to uncover his hand in a 1592 tragedy, which was called Arden of Faversham, which was so far an anonymous play. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I really find this very interesting because it says the science behind this, and you know, one often thinks that science and literature are like two completely separate right? disciplines. They cannot intersect, but apparently they can because using sophisticated computer modeling, researchers at the University of Newcastle in Australia have showed that at least five scenes in this previously anonymous play have probably been penned by Shakespeare mm -hmm. and they analyzed the frequency and patterns of words from the play, compared those with the patterns of those within plays whose authorship was already established as Shakespeare's and made the connection and says, yes, Shakespeare is indeed the author of these five passages. So now this play, Arden of Famish Favisham, mm -hmm. which was so far attributed to uh, an anonymous writer, it now says Arden of Favisham, written by Anonymous and William Shakespeare. <laughs> yet another play. I know, yet the, another play. That the, that the next generation has I to agree. study. <laughs> now, about Shakespeare, you know, sometimes they say that the best things have been written and talked about. With Shakespeare, somehow it kind of falls in place. It seems like indeed between him and uh, all the other masters of literature that have been, it's like seriously the best of things and the most deepest and the truest of human spirit has mm. everything that needs to be talked about has been talked about by Yeah, and, and talked about so beautifully with such concise words. I mean, yes. every time I go back and read any of these texts or watch any of his plays, I'm just like, I discover something new yeah. and this is after years and years of, right. of knowing him and loving him and, and reading him over and over again and I still, I still really like to, like to read Shakespeare. <laughs> um, we're talking about all that has to be talked about, has been talked about and written about. You know what, there's, there's actually these days in the modern day phenomenon, there's just so much of talk in the air. Newspapers are full of articles about Demonetization, of course, is yeah. the topic in India, and then the US election, then any election, there's just so much of talk. You know what? I picked up a paper, which is not today's, but yesterday's, oh. because I had to bring your attention to this. It is something that's just stayed with me for the most part of the day. It says, the voices in our heads, and this is a the supplement from head. Indian Express newspaper, mm -hmm. and it says, what if our phones were to go silent? Oh, that's stressful. Would you be able to deal with the silence? I don't think so. You know, that's a very interesting thought that kind of stayed with me for the entire mm. day. So, uh, yes, this talks about mm. um, 
you know, this uh, author, uh, the writer and his friend were sitting and talking about something and the phone kept ringing and both of them tried to ignore the phone for the longest time but then finally they had to be they had to pick it up, you know, football lightness can only go so far, but if somebody's constantly calling you, you just have to pick up the phone. Yeah. And then the rest of the article is about their experience, but what I'd like to bring your attention to, the, uh, attention to is about silence. Imagine technology is so much around us, it's just cell phones are ubiquitous. Imagine a world, a life without cell phones. Imagine Imagine a life without technology or any of these gadgets that kind mm. of force us to communicate with each other. On that note, there was some time back I, uh, I went for Vipassana. Vipassana is this, um, it's, a, it's a code of conduct where it, it's a 10 day course. Yeah, it's a 10 day course where you are forced to live the life of a monk. And wow. usually Vipassana is held all over the world. It's completely free if you ever wish to uh, understand what a Vipassana is, you can register at any of the centers across the world. It's completely free. You stay for 10, minute, uh, 10 days. You take an oath of silence in those 10 days. An oath of silence. So you can't say anything you at can't all. Say you need anything. to be absolutely silent. That's and right. And the communication is not just verbal. Even if we look at each other, we sometimes smile. It's acknowledging the presence of the other person. You do not even look at each other. You walk around those 10 days, complete silence. You walk around introspecting, looking down, looking up, wherever, just admire nature, but just breathe in, breathe out. That's all you do for 10 days. Wow. Trust wow. me, those 10 days of silence was the best 10 days of my life. You know, I How realized manage? I could do with those silences some, sometimes. I'm not even sure if I'd be able to manage. It is strange, but you know what? <laughs> it's interesting to try it out sometime because it actually gives you a certain discipline to follow. Hmm. On that note, we'll take a very quick break and we come back with some exercise segment, yeah? That's Sharon's favorite segment. <laughs>